how long does Kelly Harper last with the Lady Balls? So a very disappointing loss to Mississippi State, double overtime. And um, it, it, it just, to me, feels like this is going to end poorly. Portions of the program brought to you by Zach England of Best and Brock. Zach's got your back. Best injury, personal injury attorney in Chattanooga. So Best and Brock, Zach England, Zach's got your back. So your thoughts on the Lady Balls? Yeah. I am on your side now. And I think um, the Lady Vols are Alabama after Bear Bryant, where Alabama kept saying, this person played for Bear Bryant or coached under Bear Bryant. Let's hire them. And that's all they hired for. They either hired former players or Bear Bryant protégés for 25 years until they went for Nick Saban. I'm with you. I, I don't think you just go away from Pat Summit because you don't want to be around any of her protégés because you think it's just kind of a problem, but – they are very biased to players and people affiliated with the Lady Vols from certain eras. And the, as, for as long as they do that, they're never going to return to prominence. Um, are you saying, are you of the mindset that Kelly Harper's done? I think she's done. I think she's done. I just, yes, there was a Tamari Key injury this year. I understand that. But they were unranked and fell out of the top 25 before Tamari Key got hurt. And so I think she's done. And I think one of the things that's hurting Kelly Harper is it, it's ironic because you don't want to talk about you want to talk about moving on from Pat Summit, but have you seen what Carol Lawson's doing at head coach at Duke right now? I mean, she's doing an amazing job. And th- you could see there's a chance maybe Tennessee doesn't want to miss out on her. And I know she's a Pat Summit protege, but I think she might it's not about her being Kelly Harper was hired because of her connections to the Lady Vols and Pat Summit. Carol Lawson wouldn't be hired because of that. Carol Lawson would be hired specifically because of what we've seen her do at Duke already. And I think that is a bit of a difference. No, you're right. And I, I, I question, though, whether or not Carol Lawson would want the job. I mean, she has seen two Pat Summit protégés go through the ringer, and she is realistic and smart enough to know that the women's game is far more competitive than it was when Pat Summit was coaching. You're not going to win seven national titles. You're not going to go undefeated more than likely in today's game. She's got a pretty good gig at Duke where basketball is important. And I don't know if you call Carol Lawson right now if she would take the Tennessee job. And that that sounds crazy, but again, it's like there was been there's been no separation. So you never want to be the guy that replaces the guy. And again, please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You never want to be the guy that replaces the guy. You want to be the guy that replaces the guy that replaces the guy. So we all thought Kelly Harper would be that gal in this particular case and turns out not to be the case. So it's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. You've continued to have this connection. And if you went Kara Lawson, you're still kind of like the guy that replaces the guy. You still have that Pat Summit tie. So if Carol Lawson had no ties to Tennessee and she's doing what she's do, doing at Duke, or you want to take a Don Staley or somebody else that has no ties to Tennessee, then you're suddenly not the guy that's replacing the guy. I feel like Carol Lawson, if she came in, would be like the guy that's replacing the guy. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, and I'm with you. Uh, she may, I mean, I think Tennessee might be – if I were to say it's the women's basketball equivalent of UCLA on the men's side, I don't think UCLA is a good job. I'm just going to be honest. And unless you remember when Rick Barnes was negotiating with UCLA to kind of get a pay raise at Tennessee a few years ago, I had said at that time, if I were Rick Barnes, I'd much prefer to coach at Tennessee than UCLA. I mean, you can get paid the same amount of money. You have a connection. Your, your, you live, your family's from the area. This is home for you. If you're Rick Barnes, and your expectations are not going to be what they are at UCLA. UCLA still carries itself like they should be winning a national championship every year. They've got one since John Wooden retired, and that was with a coach who has gotten in trouble at two separate schools for NCAA violations. And so I, I think I wonder if the Lady Vols are going to go down the same path. And you're right, it's not six national, I mean, eight national championships and three straights not happening anymore. For those who don't realize, even UConn, who obviously reached a new level of dominance after Pat Summit passed away, unfortunately, they haven't won a national title in six years. And they're not one-on-one this year either for people who have followed them. So Gino hasn't won one since 2016. And so 
neither team is dominating the landscape anymore, and no one really is. You're right. You mentioned Don Staley. No way in the world Don Staley is leaving South Carolina for Tennessee. <laughs> that's just not happening. And so that's a good point with Carol Lawson. Um, I don't know where you go. You know, Georgia's current coach, I'm forgetting her name, Danny White hired her at UCF. Um, and she did a really good job at UCF. He hired Felicia Leggett Jack at Buffalo. Leggett Jack's at Syracuse now. I think she's going to do a good job, but she has been fired in the past. I think that's a bit of a red flag sometimes. I just think that we know that Danny White is the, I said, this is why he's the best athletic director in sports. He's the best hire in sports. And so, you know, I, I think Danny White already, if, I think right now, if, Danny, if, if Kelly Harper is on the hot seat, I, I guarantee you Danny White already has 10 names he's ready to talk to right now. Oh, you, you, you always have the bus list in case somebody steps in front of a bus and gets hit. Um, <laughs> you always have the bus list. You're talking about a, uh, Katie Abrahamson Henderson. And yes. she, she's won seven SEC regular season championships, four conference tournament championships. The, the, the thing that's incredibly tough about the Tennessee job is not just the fact that you have to live up to uh, Pat Summit's legacy, which you're not going to be able to do. She, the, the, the sport has changed so, so much. But you, you have to realize that the fan base expectations – are high anyway. And <clears throat> they're going to expect they're going to expect a championship once every 4 or 5 years. Mm-hmm. I mean even if the expectations are properly adjusted from Pat Summit to somebody else whether it's Carol Lawson or whoever of all time saying I believe Carol Lawson would come to Tennessee if the money was right. Um I think she would too. But I think if I were her advisor, I might say about this long and hard care because I don't know that <clears throat> this will, this will end well. Yeah. And I, I want to say this out uh, up front. I will, it, there's a couple of hard things with the Tennessee lady balls that make them different from other, other programs. Do we want to say there is a Dave, as you know, I feel like the lady ball hardcore fan base is a little bit different demographically than who follows men's basketball and football. Not that they don't cross, but I think the, the, the the dedicated fan base is a little bit different demographically. And I think many of them care a lot more about not just winning, but what Tennessee, the Lady Vols brand represents. Remember how big of a deal it was when Dave Hart took away the Lady Vols name a few years ago? Yes. And I think that that's where it's tricky. This post on our message board, should Tennessee consider Tyler Summit to coach the girls team? I don't think that's going to happen. Things went very south. Uh, well, I don't think Tyler should ever be allowed in any position of power ever again. Yes. And I did some Googling, coincidentally, like a couple weeks ago, just to see what he's up to. And I think he's out of coaching altogether. There was a, a scandal at Law Tech that I think would preclude him from that. I think most people thought that would be the natural progression before that happened, though. Didn't, didn't you? Yeah, but the, I'm so sick of, like, coaches' sons getting, like – or children like you know getting positions because of that i mean i know how you feel about Derek dooley and i mean i am with you that i think half the reason dooley was hired was he was vince dooley's son and great, great parallel though yeah <laughs> mike shula at alabama too you know it's funny we talk about Derek dooley versus kippy brown sylvester croom should have gotten that alabama job in 2003 and then they gave it to don shula's son and so you know there's yeah i, I I'm, I'm tired of coaches sons <laughs> Yeah, I um, I'm not a big fan of coaches' sons either, uh, but I think we would have to agree that the um, the Tyler Summit thing is definitely a whole different animal altogether. Um, yes, so. massive, massive scandal. <laughs>